Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you. So what would be a liberty-oriented, constructive response to the kinds of things the North Korean government is doing? And when we think along those lines, exactly what position should we put ourselves in? In our hypothetical scenario, well, in most people's hypothetical scenarios, people just assume, like, they, well, if I were dictator of the world, then I would do this. And that. But of course, no such thing exists. Even if you're president of the U.S., you, your powers in this situation would be limited. You can say this should happen and that should happen, but ultimately, maybe the powers should be defined before you say what you would do. For the sake of argument, let's say you're president of the U.S., what do you do that would be ethical, that commits no act of aggression against uh, uh, North Korean average folks, no act of aggression against Americans? That means, of course, that a lot of things are taken off the table that somebody like Donald Trump would do, or Obama or whoever. The idea I haven't heard brought up much, but which some South Koreans have tried to do in the past, is to try and air deliver stuff from South Korea or China into North Korea. So if I recall what the South Koreans were trying to do, it was the civilians, you know, average people, not the government, I think. Try, they were trying to release balloons in such a manner that they would get into North Korea. Now, I don't remember what they had on these balloons, but you could... Uh, you could do all sorts of things with drones now along these lines where you uh, maybe they're propaganda drones and they drop flash drives or they drop uh, leaflets or they uh, drop food uh, with some kind of propaganda attached that says, hey, this is what the West is doing for you. We're not all bad. Start to turn the people against the, uh, the, the North Korean government. But before that, I think what should be happening is this, should, this, this could be used as a deterrent where, say, again, let's say I'm Trump, uh, I, I could say to the world, okay, listen, if, uh, if North Korea pushes it too far, what we'll do, uh, one, of, one of the options will be to lift the, the restrictions uh, that, the South, that, is, that are being placed on civilians uh, when it comes to launching things into North Korea. Because I believe balloons are restricted around there. It's the South Koreans that are stopping people from sending balloons into the north. Last I checked. So Trump could initially have not work out an agreement with the South Koreans where they uh, agree to um, lift those restrictions under various conditions and that could be made known in the public. So now there's this thing you could do which is not warfare but it gives you a chance to respond to the North in a way that does not help the North. You know, so far, the, the, the sanctions and stuff like that, they, they, they just made the government up there stronger. I'm pretty sure the government would be wildly against the North Korean government, wildly against any kind of foreign something or another appearing in, on the scene and... and, and dropping flash drives with different information on the people. That means it could be almost as powerful as a deterrent as actual warfare without giving them the sort of causes belli that they need to, to to do crazy things. And and again, it shouldn't be it shouldn't just be done out of the blue. Don't just take don't just send the drones or the food over there out of the blue. It has to be something where they've trig triggered it with some new action. We all know uh, that, that you know in the history of nuclear superpower and small power interaction is that so far there hasn't been a history of one of them bringing freedom to another by using the nuclear weapons. But freedom has sometimes come, relative freedom, as a result of people changing their minds about their government. The other option that a U.S. president would have to do something constructive and non-aggressive is to pressure the North Koreans to stop preventing I'm sorry to pressure the South Koreans to stop to stop preventing the South Korean people from defending themselves and it must be the most uh, strict strictly gun controlled place I can name in the democratic world
And what other restrictions are they imposing on people? Like if you were an American and you wanted to prepare for nuclear war, and, and you are probably an American if you're listening, well, imagine all the hoops and, and uh, taxes and expenses that uh, get put in front of you while you're building your bomb shelter or whatever it is you're building or buying. The Libertarian Party around 2002, uh, maybe a little later than that, uh, claimed that the average item you buy, or at least like the average car you buy, costs ten times as much as it would if the government just weren't interfering in the process. It's likely that this same, these same numbers apply to almost anything large that you could buy or build, and probably all the small things too. There is a root to our vulnerability that is so pervasive it's not seen. And that is the, the fact that the governments impoverish us and make, us, it, make it much more difficult for us to buy the things we might want to protect ourselves. Ham radio is even a better example. You know, again, probably the average uh, ham piece of ham equipment that you get costs 20 times as much as it should because not only are there taxes and fees like usual with everything else, but also the authorities have or arguably done to ham what nature and scarcity have done to medical equipment. And by that, what I mean is like when you buy medical equipment, much of it is so specialized, especially if it's targeted toward a specific and relatively rare problem, that it becomes very expensive. Ham, to a lesser extent, suffers the same way because the natural state of this technology would be for it to be uh, almost ubiquitous, or like, in, you know, almost every other house would have uh, this kind of equipment. But because there's a license attached to it, and you gotta take a test and all this garbage, fewer people get involved, so it's harder to create an economy of scale around mobile transmitters and antennas and so forth that match the needs of ham radio operators. Plus, there's not very many people to talk to, and there aren't, uh, well, there are some things you're not allowed to talk about. <laughs> so, it's just a thing that results in really boring conversations about signal strength and weather, not much else. Imagine what it could have been. And by the same token, imagine what the defense of South Korea could be without government interference. One gaping hole I'm leaving here, though, is the question of, again, say you're president, do you really just stand down American nuclear forces if North Korea launches an attack of a nuclear type? Or do you launch the things and kill random people because the alternative is letting North Korea get away with it? That's the horrible dilemma which, for which uh, liberty thinking doesn't offer me any good solutions. But maybe you are smarter than I am. What are your solutions? Post them in the comments section, as usual. Why does the world look like this? Well, it's because you're using these instead of these. Admittedly, so am I sometimes. But if you're not using Bitcoin yet, you're missing the boom of the century. So go to Bitcoin.com, get their free wallet, find out what it's like to be in a free market. Whether crypto advanced or unspeakably new, Bitcoin.com has a wallet for you.